Hi, welcome or welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk about why I think you should make a mental health blanket in 2023 or whenever you're watching this video. I have some notes in my yarn book <laughs> and I'll try to put some timestamps down below so that you can jump ahead to wherever you'd like. I'm trying to make this as organized as possible. This right here is my mental health blanket. I have been working on this for all of 2022. Obviously, it's not done because 2022 is not over yet, but I wanted to put this video up before the end of the year because this isn't the kind of thing that you can easily track like you could with a temperature blanket. You can go back and check on what it was like for previous days, but it's kind of hard to remember what state you were in mentally. Um, at least for me, it is. And of course, that also depends on how you've decided to make your blanket, but just to keep things as simple as possible, I'm putting this video up now so that you can get a head start if you decide to do it please do it but this is only actually the first half of the year as you can see it's pretty big already it drapes over my shoulders uh, when it's done it's gonna be quite long and I'll have the option of draping it over my shoulders the other way so about the blanket that I have been making so the pattern that I'm using is the same pattern that Tony from Teal Yarn Crafts used for her temperature blanket for 2021. It's made using the linen stitch and I've made each month into one square. Every one row of color represents one day during that month. Each square has 33 rows because not every month has the same amount of days and so every square will have the same amount of rows and I just fill in the extra ones with the border color which happens to be cream which is also the same color that I'm using to connect everything. The yarn that I'm using is Cotton Cream by Loops and Threads. Let's see if that'll focus a little bit. I'll put all the information in the description box as well. This yarn is 87% cotton and 13% nylon. It's a medium four yarn um, and the recommended hook size is 6.5 millimeters. I'm using a six millimeter hook for my project. It works out fine. And for an example, I thought I would go through my breakdown of my own personal scale and the colors that I'm using for this blanket. At the very bottom of the scale, um, in a category that I've designated as horrible, we have this light gray color, which I don't know if it's coming out as gray on camera, but it's a very light gray. Next we have bad, which is country blue. This is one of my favorite colors in the blanket, um, but it's one that I hope not to use often. <laughs> Then one that I have used often um, is a category that I've called, this is part of my neutral series and I'll explain more of it later, but this is neutral low and it's dusty mint, also one of my favorites. For neutral, it's the color that I just showed you, pale orchid. For neutral high, we have pastel pink. Again, I'm not sure if the pink of this is really coming out as well as I'd like to on camera, but it will absolutely show in my next category, which is good. And that's this, what's it called? Flamingo, it's a very bright pink. Um, on camera, it's looking a lot lighter, I think. Um, it's definitely more on the orangey red scale in person. And then finally, my highest category, which is great or, you know, fantastic, whatever, just the highest point in my scale is this color called mustard. And embarrassingly, you can tell that I haven't used this once this entire year. <laughs> For the border, I'm using this cream color, which is looking very white on camera, but I promise you it's this very pretty cream. The way that I'm keeping track of the blanket month to month is with a very long note on my phone where I have been putting each day of every month and at the end of the day, I sort of assess what I'm feeling, how the day went overall, and I put one category next to it. And then when I'm ready to actually stitch up each month, I put it right here inside this journal. So you see I've got my January blanket tracker and I write down the numbers one through however many days of the month there are and then I just transfer over my notes from my phone into this journal. I'm the kind of person who needs every step written out for me or I will forget. So when I sit down to stitch up the month, I always have my journal with me. I even write down on the side if the round that I'm working on is supposed to be worked on the right or wrong side because that's the kind of thing that I will immediately forget. And then when I'm done with that row, I just cross it out and that's how I make my one month block. And of course I do this for every single month that I'm working up because I need to know exactly where I am. I also tend to work on this project in big chunks at a time. And so if I feel like doing half of the month in one sitting and then leaving the rest of it for another, I always know where I left off. So why did I decide to make a mental health blanket as opposed to a mood blanket or a temperature blanket? 
etc etc honestly at first i just wanted a year-long project to focus on at this point last year the place that i was in the state that i was in i knew that i needed something that i could focus on for the entire year something that would keep me looking inward that would keep me accountable i really wanted to get in touch with my emotions better my my mental health better get better at kind of assessing where things were more often and of course i just wanted a cozy blanket also <laughs> but i ended up learning a lot over the course of this year while working on this blanket that i just wanted to share with you because if you're going to do this maybe you'll learn some things about yourself in the process as well so one of the things that i've learned that is most important to me is something i touched on earlier which is being more in touch or more mindful about my emotions and how I'm feeling and my mental state. I have a difficult time understanding and kind of pinpointing my emotions, which of course transfers into my mental health state. I am autistic and I don't know if this has to do with the alexithymia or not, probably, <laughs> but part of combating that is trying to understand it every day and practice little by little which i think on a scale like this is very doable it's just something that i do at the end of every day and it's helped me be more mindful and think really think about the factors that lead into how i'm feeling every part of my day contributing to what i where i am at that point in time the way that i assess how i feel uh plays a part in how i made my scale in the beginning of the year in the first place that's why i have that neutral tier i knew that most of the time i wasn't really sure how i'm feeling i accounted for the fact that i don't really know at any given point in time that it could take a few days to process um what i'm feeling and so neutral is kind of my default state um at the end of the day i the way that i ask myself is if somebody came up to you right now and said how are you doing how would you answer if i said i don't really know or i don't, don't really have any thoughts on it then i leave it at neutral if i think i don't really know but I'm not feeling that bad. Like I, I feel like I'm on a higher note, neutral high, and the same goes for neutral low. If I'm feeling kind of tired or, you know, I can't really tell, but I can tell that the scale is tipping in one way or the other. That's what the neutral tiers are for. Good and bad are very clear to me and that's why they have their own tiers. And great and horrible are such highs and such lows that they're undeniable and that's why they get their own tears as well but i've noticed over the course of the year and i'm also in therapy and so my, my therapist has noticed this as well but my answers to how are you feeling have changed i'm able to give it more thought i'm able to just really get a, more of a process for understanding how i'm feeling it's a it's a relaxing process honestly because it, it goes into making something cozy relaxing something that'll help me in the long run thinking about my well-being has changed over the course of the year as well. I've noticed that what might have in the beginning of the year been put in a lower tier is now in more of a neutral tier. Um, it may not seem like a big jump, but to me it's, it's quite a big jump. Of course, this isn't due to the blanket solely because I am working on this in therapy with a professional, but Working on it every day has given me the incentive to practice and really hone that skill for myself. This project has also given me a reason to relax, a way to stim if I feel like I need to be using my hands. The backlog does not really scare me all that much because I can sit down and focus on one thing for hours at a time, especially if I'm feeling kind of anxious or I need to think. I think better when I'm doing something with my hands and having a simple project where I'm just like following the instructions I left for myself and crossing things off one at a time is really beneficial for me and it's really recontextualized the way that i think about my bad days one bad day does not make a bad life or a bad month in the midst of my worst mental health days it really feels impossible like you're never gonna get out of it and sometimes i felt like oh i ruined the blanket if i was having a um a month that was a little bit higher on the color scale but that's just not true so for example this is please ignore the ends that are not woven in yet um don't be me weave them in as you go <laughs> this for example is i'm pretty sure this is august as you can see i've got a couple days here in the middle that were good they were on the higher end of my scale and i was so happy to have such lighter colors like i really picked colors that i knew were going to look nice together and be pleasing to me but then towards the end of the month i had a bad day and unfortunately that's just the way things are i had to put it into this piece and when i look at it now i don't feel you know disappointed like i ruined the entire month like it's still a pretty square it still came out nice 
Similarly, there was a day in, I think this was January, where I had a horrible day. It was the lowest point on my scale. Uh, and that's right here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and that's kind of my point. Uh, when I look back on this and I think, wow, you know, I mean, there are some days you could clearly see we're bad because I've got that blue. But when I look for that horrible day, it blends in with the rest of them. And looking at it once I finished this square made me think, wow, it really is just it's one day and it doesn't make this square any less pretty. It doesn't mean that uh, it's not a part of something beautiful. The same with my life, like not to get cheesy, but you know, one bad day is just one bad day and I can make it through and still be a part of something good and worth being proud of. Does that make sense? So now I have some advice for if you're thinking about making a mental health blanket, which I really hope you do, it's a lot of fun. The first thing is to find a pattern that you really love, that you feel comfortable doing and that you have fun working up. I fell in love with that linen stitch blanket last year on first sight, I, I knew that I really wanted to make something with it and that's what uh, kind of pushed me to think about what I could track throughout the year that I thought would be beneficial for me. But not only that, it's easy for me to memorize, which is saying a lot because it, it's hard for things to just kind of like stick into my head. So when I sit down to work on it every month, it's not really a chore. I have fun working it up. It's pretty routine, repetitive, which works really well for me. Then I would say to create your scale, like the scale that you're going to be working with beforehand, before you think about anything else. I already mentioned the way that I decided. It's slightly different from working with a mood blanket because if I were going to do that, I experience way too many things at once and it would be really hard for me to narrow it down to just one. If you feel like making a mood blanket, if that works out for you, that's great. You could try it that way. Um, for me, thinking about my mental health in that particular way was just easiest. And so I came up with that scale first and then I decided, okay, well, I'm gonna need to find a yarn that I really like that also includes these, well, at least seven colors that I really like so that it will fit the scale. When you're choosing your colors, make sure that they're colors you love. You're gonna see them a lot more often. It's gonna be a much smaller range of colors depending on how you do it but it's going to be a smaller range of colors compared to if you were making a temperature blanket because a temperature blanket is going to go across many ranges um, depending on how you do that also but in general i knew that my scale of only seven colors was going to be a lot different from if i had made a a different kind of blanket and I wanted those seven colors to be ones that I liked working with because I was going to see them often if you know yourself and kind of where you're at as a default I would suggest picking a color you really like for that maybe not your exact favorite but maybe your second favorite because that's where you're gonna be seeing a lot so I knew that I really liked that dusty mint that I showed earlier and my default at that point was feeling kind of low not like bottom of the barrel but you know I wasn't feeling great most of the time and so I knew that color was gonna come up a lot and honestly that is the color that I have replaced the most often and when I went to buy the yarn I made sure that I got a couple more of the ones that I, I knew at the time I was going to need more of I got at least one of each color but I made sure that I put the emphasis on the part of the scale I was at at that moment. Maybe once you find that color that you think you're going to be using a lot, I would build the scale of colors around it. Pink, purple, blue are my favorite colors, and so I wanted my scale to go outward from there. So the lower you go, the bluer it gets into a gray that wasn't as aggressive. That's why it's a light gray, um, so that I can think more gently <laughs> of my really, really bad days. Going up the scale, I wanted it to get pinker and pinker because pink is my all-time favorite color. If there had been other shades of pink available with the yarn that I chose, my topmost color would have been another variation of pink, um, but unfortunately that's not how it worked out and that's why that mustard yellow is the top color, which is also a color I like. And it just has not come up once <laughs> in my blanket and that's totally okay. I'm very happy with the pinks that have come up and I can use that yellow for something else. When you're keeping track of how your mental health went that day, I would suggest doing that somewhere that you have access to often it doesn't have to be your phone if you don't feel like you're reaching for your phone that often throughout the day but i do it's always near me and so it just makes the most sense for me to log it as part of my nightly routine and just keep it in my phone somewhere that i know that i can reach it before i transfer it over to my notebook if you don't need that you can just keep it in your notebook but definitely keep track at the end of every day it's not 
like I mentioned earlier, not gonna be the same as keeping track of the temperature or going back to look at it. The thing about this is you could at least cross-reference. Um, there were definitely some days I kind of fell behind, some days that were a blur and I forgot to log it. When that happens, my default assumption is that I was probably just not feeling anything at all and so I just went into neutral. But I was able to cross-reference with my journal. If you do something like that, like journaling or keeping a diary, you can look back and see how you were feeling. And so I've definitely pulled from my journal entries before. Once or twice, just to see um, how I was feeling and fill in some missing links. Or sometimes another trick that I use is looking through my photos. If I've taken any in the previous days, um, I live a, a fairly boring life, so sometimes it doesn't always work, but I could see what I was doing that day and sort of try my best and reflect on how I was feeling and what category to mark for that day. But like I said, if I've forgotten to mark it down, more often than not, it's just a neutral day. I Nothing remarkable happened and I was at my like baseline of nothing to see here, you know? <laughs> Which is great because like I mentioned earlier, my baseline at the start of the year was nothing to see here but I'm kind of sad. And you can already see how it's changed. It's it's moved and that's been really interesting to watch happen. That's just about all the advice that I have right now. I can't really think of anything else. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try and help as much as I can. I really hope that you consider making a mental health blanket. I really think it's a great accessory to have. It's something I've talked over with my therapist and she loved the idea too. I I think if you are somebody who struggles with your mental health or even somebody who just wants to be more conscious of the way that you're feeling this is a great project to take on because at the end you're going to have something beautiful and honestly bad mental health days are always going to be a thing like you can't avoid I mean you could try and prevent it but sometimes it just is what it is and you know next year when I have a panic attack it's gonna suck but I can have a panic attack while wrapped in this beautiful blanket that I made for myself out of all the days that I, I made it through. You know, this is proof that I made it. I got through those days, whether they were good or bad, I survived, I'm here. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you'll consider it. If you are planning on making one, let me know. I'll leave my Instagram where I post the things that I've made um, because I when I finish this, I'll post it on my Instagram so that we can see the final result. So that'll probably be sometime in January. And yeah, let me know if you're taking on this project. Let me know if you have any other ways of making a mental health mood blanket. I hope you have a great day or night or whatever it is. <laughs> Bye.